Um, so I'm from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences and I'm going to give you just a really brief um, run, run through of the NIH Roadmap Epidemics Program, which in many ways is kind of the complementary um, program to ENCODE. Um, so as many of you know, there's lots of different epigenomic changes that have been implicated in many human diseases. Um, a lot of these changes occur through normal developmental processes, and there's also lots of external influences and environmental exposures that can impact the epigenome as well. Um, so the NIH uh, Epigenomics Roadmap Program is really a comprehensive program, a common fund program that has a lot of different complementary uh, components. Um, it's really um, trying to accelerate the understanding of epigenomics in human health and disease through a lot of different new research tools, data sets, and infrastructure. And um, this is listing a lot of the different components of the Roadmap Epigenomics Program. So um, there is a large research component. Those are mostly R01 grants that are focused on different disease outcomes. There's a discovery of novel epigenomic marks. There's a computational analyses component. There's also a technology development component that includes a lot of in vivo epigenomic imaging. And then um, the Reference Epigenome Mapping Consortium is kind of the public resource of the human epigenomics data. And this has really leveraged a pipeline that includes a lot of next generation sequencing technologies to map DNA methylation, histone modifications, chromatin accessibility, and RNA transcripts. And um, I have down there, um, I've listed uh, the different mapping center components and the coordination center. So the mapping centers have made epigenomic profiles of um, many different primary cells and tissues, and this includes the heart, the GI tract, the lung, many brain components, many blood components, and this is in both um, adult and fetal uh, tissues. And They've also looked at a lot of different derived embryonic stem cells as well. And these areas that were selected were carefully um, trying to represent as many of the normal counterparts of many tissues and organ systems that are frequently involved in human disease. So from these studies, uh, many questions have now been answered about how different human cell types and tissues do differ epigenetically. And there's lots of um, uses, of course, of this epigenomic information, and I know many of you are um, using it in many different ways, and it's been encouraging um, at ASHG to see um, a lot of uses of the roadmap data. I just wanted to highlight a couple that I think do complement especially the ENCODE use of um, uh, the data. And one is the marking of functional genomic elements. So along with ENCODE, the roadmap data has really assisted in annotating a lot of different areas of the genome and different cell types. And then the other one is interpreting GWAS hits. And um, Mike already kind of alluded to this, but we've learned that a lot of the um, uh, GWAS hits are really in coding region, uh, non-coding regions, um, regulatory regions rather, um, and that a lot of them are in or near enhancer or promoter elements. And that's really um, impacted the types of functional follow-up studies that a lot of investigators have used and have focused on in recent years in order to interpret the GWAS data. And then I also just wanted to mention that it's been used um, in, in recent years to try to better identify different cell types that are involved in particular diseases. So for this particular example in this paper, um, they were able to show that a number of different immune cells were implicated in Crohn's disease. And so finally, I just wanted to mention that um, we had a big issue of Nature earlier this year that had a lot of different publications, um, including an integrative analysis reference epigenome paper. Um, and I really encourage you to take a look at this issue if you haven't already. It kind of gives you a good idea of the breadth and the depth of this program. Um, and there were a number of other publications in Nature-associated journals as well. 
Um, with that, thank you. <laughs>